What it do, players and trainers? It is your boy, the Blazing Squid. It's been a good minute, but your boy's back, and we are going to be doing some live commentary of what seems to be season. Is it 10 or are we on 11? Season 10, it's on the title. Finals of LDL Lonely Draft League G Max Season 10. I just said that twice in one sentence, but I'm not alone. I have a very good friend of mine. Hey, hey Squid, thank you for having me here. I'm Zeminon. Uh, you might recognize me from one of the other finals matches that we were casting for, for our season here in the Lonely Draft League. And uh, this should be a really fun matchup between Lazy Ghost and Spartan. So who, who's your pick? Like, seriously, what is your pick going into this match? I know you were just telling me briefly about the match that your father is Lazy Ghost. How is that even possible? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not possible since I think he's only like a year or two older than me. Um, but he's Lazy Ghost is the guy that got me into competitive draft league Pokemon. So if it wasn't really uh, for him, I don't know. I wouldn't even be here right now with these squids. So my heart, my heart is leaning one way, but I'm, I'm professional enough as a commentator to make sure I, I call this right down the middle 50-50. I have, uh, I have no rooting interest. I actually don't even know uh, like any of the sets or anything like that. So I'm going in completely blind, completely even. Well, on the contrary, I do know, know some of the sets as I was trying to help out Anthony. Uh, Anthony finished fifth this season overall which I can compare myself to as being the Season 9 champion. I went into the playoffs in the fifth seed. So I know where Spartan 275 stands at right now and what it is like to climb all the way back and take a championship. So I'm, I'm kind of my heart is ruling kind of over to Spartan 275, but I know Lazy Ghost is such an extraordinary battler. We go back to back. We have history, <laughs> pretty good history. But man, I can't wait to see what this match has in store. I'm already shaking. I'm in shaking from excitement because <laughs> yeah, I know you're this match. You're playing and you're nervous. That's how like the, like our G Max League. That's the highest level of competition we have in the Lonely Draft League. So this is, you know, like you know, think of it as like our major leagues if you're looking at it like a baseball term. So these are the two best teams from our best uh, best division in the in the Discord. So I think this should act. This this should be a, a fun fun game and i see two obstacles actually uh so that's already fun yeah 100 percent um i can relate because um i think facing arthur myself i had thingy i had uh we both had arcanites i mean not arcanites we both had um thing oh wow the fight oh Ooh. Lazy Ghost winning turn zero here with the lead of Obstagoon against the Intimidate Arcanine. That's going to boost his attack by one. I know uh, I know that uh, Lazy Ghost is actually really, really up on Obstagoon. He thinks he's probably one of his best Pokemon in this matchup. Uh, so this Obstagoon could, uh, could potentially carry him to victory. Um, it's going to be very, very interesting. I, w prepping for this, I did not see Defiant coming. I thought the Flame Orb set was going to come because I think that's mostly what we've seen all season long. But taking advantage of that Intimidate, man, I love it. I love it. Arthur, off to a smart start. He's got his little um, substitute up. I don't know how... It depends. Because we all know that Sylveon could carry the Hyper Voice, which goes through Substitute here. But right. does Arthur have something up his sleeve? Is the question here. So you have you have to wonder with Lazy Ghost because he always brings the spice. He's always coming up with uh, with teams. He finds a way. Like he's like, okay, this one Pokemon can six zero my opponent if it just sets up correctly. If it's like a like a calm mind, rest, sleep, talk, Gothitelle, or like a uh, you know <laughs> some like uh, what's it curse. Um, was it Curse Gujra? It was some type of Gujra that was that was some boosting Gujra that got up to plus six with Dragon Tail, and he set up Stealth Rocks and just keep like it kept just like swapping everything out, and they were taking plus six damage. And uh, so Lazy Ghost definitely has a play style where he thinks like one of my Pokemon can six zero my opponent, and uh, by the look of it, that might be what his Obstagoon Obstagoon set is going for here. Uh, I'm not I'm not too really familiar with Obstagoon's. Uh, setup moves if he has any any type of moves that will boost his attack or something um, But even a simple knockoff if he does have that would be a safe play to knock off the item of whatever uh, Spartan wants to switch into this slot Yeah, for real for real. Uh, he does get bulk up. I know that much. I'm not sure if he okay. gets swords dance 
So I'll be interesting to see. I do know this thing gets skunk shot. So even Sylveon is not the safest like switch in here because you might lose something. So right, especially uh, if you bulk up this turn. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. Um, I we didn't prep for this, so I'm not gonna see how Spartan 275 is gonna come out here. Um, yikes, yikes indeed, man. I <laughs> <laughs> this is uh it's this is a long time on this turn. Like this is a this is a crucial turn for Spartan because he does not want this obstacle to stay behind the sub but like you think oh Sylveon he has he can just bring it in but it's slower than the obstacle so he he opts to go for the uh the zero or instead who is faster and can break this up oh oh wait he, oh he didn't make the read he could have gone for the bulk up here i think 100 percent and got oh man okay so we've seen obstruct we've seen substitute we've seen that's it so far right that's it right Right. Okay. He has the attack boost from he the, has the attack boost that from... wasn't bulk up. So. Okay, so I'm, I'm thinking here. I, I think the, the play here was 100%. He should have gone for um, bulk up. This Zoro Arisa does have bulk up, and that could have given him a bunch of... Um, knowing it, Arthur's play style, Arthur always loves to have some type of cheeky thing plus protect. Like Clefable. Clefable always has wish protect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of Arthur's play style in a sense. You can never play it too safe. Um... So he's gonna go for another plasma fist. He is at neg one now, or neg two, is it? Throw chop, I'm and he is fist. oh, throw chop for the hyper voice. That's a oh, that's a one man. hit KO. He and the, his Zara Aura, who was his Pokemon, one of the Pokemon that was faster than Lazy's Obstagoon, is down here, and Lazy claiming Lazy goes claiming the first KO here in the finals, and that's that's huge um, because unless unless Sylveon for some reason but brought Moonblast, he's not going to be able to click Hyper Voice. All right, so this is it. How? Oh. Oh, Ooh, Stealth Rock! Called the, called that oh, man. He, so he learned from his last mistake. Okay, so Stealth Rocks, it's going to kind of help. Depending on what Rotom set it is, it's going to might be taking the 25. Um, and then it kind of gauges and tells you if Cliff Fable is going to be unaware this um, this matchup or Magikarp, depending on the damage it takes here. Um, and we're breaking any potential Sashers, which I don't see if he would bring any. But it's always good to have. Um, yeah. But now, now let's see what these two opponents are gonna do here. Um, it, is, it is pretty safe for Terrakian to click close combat here, because like, uh, if any, obviously except for Dragapult, he's at least gonna hit something on on Lazy's side, and it does reveal the information of what ability Clefable would have if he is avoid if he avoids those stealth rocks. So, uh, and especially since Spartan is now down a Pokemon this early, he's got to try to come back in the and by winning the information game and the information aspects of this matchup. So, like if he can learn what the sets are of Lazy Ghost Pokemon without or while staying relatively healthier in a in a good spot, uh, it, it could work out. Oh my God, that's the gutsiest thing I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> the the su the substitute from uh, from Obstagoon as as Terrakian is or is sitting in front of you in front of him. The question is okay, so he does go for the facade here as his opponent hits him back with a double edge. Wow, that is damage and a half. Um, yeah, and now this Obstagoon is going to get knocked out to the burn next turn, no matter what. So now we know his full moveset, and that full moveset is actually very nice indeed. It's, um, what, Charizard? No, not Charizard. Why do I bring up Charizard? Charizard is on my team. Arcanine, Arcanine. <laughs> um, like, I think a huge step back was probably not going for an attack right off the bat, but it's kind of hard to do that when you already gave your opponent that plus one. Especially once you activated that Defiant and your opponent is plus one, you like you want to play it safe and swap out. Um, Should have gave um, those key pointers before the match about how you can't swap out on Arthur. If you swap out, you give him <laughs> the chance to set up. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because it came through my mind. And I was supposed to tell him. I was like, look, Anthony, whatever you do, you can't fall for the bait. He wants you to fall for the bait with some type of setup. 
which then gives you the biggest down step or downfall and i forgot to give him that advice and now i'm regretting it because now it might cost him a match but hopefully hey, not well, who knows oh man he can bring it back he, he's back in the same position he was a couple turns ago his terrakian who is faster than obstagoon can hit it with a close combat i do question um why he didn't click close combat the last time uh because it would have worked out since Lazy Ghost got greedy and went for the substitute. But, you know, we don't live in that alternate timeline. Uh, so instead, we saw the timeline where uh, where this obstacle got to stick around where it really shouldn't sell. Yeah. Uh, now you have, you have even more mind games with tracking because you didn't click close combat last time expecting the Clefable switch. Like, are you going to click it again? Or are you going to click it this time? Or are you too in your own head and going to try to predict the Clefable again? Yeah, totally get where you're coming from. Um, you know, there's always the possibility that he was, like, choiced in some sense. Which would be a high-tier play to go for Stealth Rocks while being choiced, expecting his opponent to to go for that obstruct as it did. You know, as right. we saw there. Um, that's always a possibility. Um, yeah, but the Clefable being there could be a potential. But you gotta remember, this thing gets Poison Jab, so maybe Clefable isn't the best switch in. Um... And moves like that. Uh, Arthur does struggle a bit against fighting types. I think he's like his only thing. Well, well, uh, my Conkelder. When it was my match, Conkelder was a huge, huge threat for him. But let's see what goes on. What goes down here? We're gonna see a Stone Edge right off the bat, and Rotom goes down. That's a strong mid round play from Spartan there because he didn't have to close combat in case the Clefable or the Dragapult switched in uh so obviously risky because there was a 20 percent chance that he did no damage there if stone edge missed but he does actually claim a knockout and just like that we are back to five versus five between between these two trainers okay we got we got ferrothorn in the house now Ooh, you know you know what i don't like about ferrothorn it gets thunder wave i don't know why in the world this mod gets thunder wave but it does uh, but let's see what happens here as he does go for the leech seed we did prep for a leech seed um ferrothorn uh, in our mock battles i ran um iron defense leech seed spikes just because i wanted to hazard stack and something else uh but let's see what our opponent does here he goes for the flare blitz wow this is a bulky bulky elder wow that is uh and he's also um yeah he he took that floor, but it's like a champ. The other thing I was thinking is, uh, is Lazy Ghost might be suspecting that that Terrakian was choice choice locked into Stone Edge because if he wasn't locked, why would you bring a fer a Ferrothorn in <laughs> against the Terrakian uh, to to set that out? So that might. It that might be something that Lazy Ghost is onto on the Terrakian set. But here, this Conkelder can go for a Drain Punch, potentially, to eat up any damage that would come from the Arcanine and, and recover its HP afterwards. Of course, this Arcanine doesn't really want to stay in because he has the Leech Seeds on him, so it's going to be taking a little bit of his, his HP away every turn. Um, I don't see... Yep, you, so Spartan does not have a Ghost type. He has the, he has the Resist in the Necrozma and the Sylveon. Um, so they might be nice switch-ins for the for the Arcanine, but if Conkelder is holding knockoff, that uh, I think it's knockoff, right? Am I crazy? Uh, no, he, get knockoff? yeah, he does get knockoff. So yeah. You're not okay. going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that might be a, a, a nice mid-ground play for Lazy Ghost to to knock off the incoming Necrozma or Sylveon if he's expecting a switch. I feel like this Conkelder might. You can call me crazy, but it might also have a. Um, What's it called? Ooh, gives momentum here now that he gets the um, the thing off. That's um, right, he has so teleport. He, he showed so, that turn one. So now it's kind of limited because he knows he cannot go into the Sylveon because he has Throat Chop. And he knows also he can't go into the Arcanine because he will activate the... Um, well, he's already in now, Arcanine. So he can either force the hand like, always, like he's been doing so far, go into Terrakion, and close combat which but then if he's a potential scarf then that's where um dragon ball kind of comes in and puts yeah. him in a, in a very <laughs> tough position but i'm like where this match is going so far i i think i think um spartan 275 is making the plays that he needs to stay himself alive after a yeah, very very rough start better than those first couple of turns 100 like percent. even it is definitely evened out much more 
No, completely agree. Um, yeah, our mock battles were a little bit... He started off very offensive, which could have helped him out right here. But I said, you know, you have to adapt. Like, seriously, when it comes to in-game, you have to adapt. It's very crucial. Um, but, man, I'm, I'm liking where this game is going. The funny thing is, I know what Spartan's 275 sets are. So it's like, it's like, what, what do we do here? Man, I don't know. <laughs> you're, thinking, you're thinking the same questions that, that Spartan is thinking in this spot, because as I have the experience you know, from, from facing off against Lazy Ghost and getting absolutely obliterated multiple times by, by him in draft leagues, like he just, he has an ability to just think think above you every every turn think you know making the the most optimal play when you don't even see it coming that's like one of lazy ghost best best strengths that we've already seen implemented in this matchup like calling calling the uh the terrakian switch and going for sub so uh you know sometimes you can get a little defeatist when you're facing off against him if you're not making the right plays but that teleport was very strong on the arc nine and that's a really that's a really nice tech uh to bring to the finals because that gives him the switching priority and now he has the sylveon um who is not worried about any uh, like a uh, gunk shot or anything since we now know all four of obstacles attacks all right my question here is oh okay Ooh. i like that i like that so he learned he's learning it's, it's this is all back to your adaptation. I thought for a second here he was gonna try to beat that. No. Wait. Training uh, kiss. He did bring another fairy attack that was not hyper voice. Because if he just if he just got hit by hyper voice, that would have been really bad for the the substitute. No, that would have been well. It would have been bad if he went for throat chop. Okay, so this actually changes the whole dynamics of the game, because what we did mock he had hyper voice. Or did he have well, Moonblast? He, he might have both of them. What is going on here? Another he's, one. He's calling these obstructs. He's, this Sylveon's looking really strong against him. Oh, but oh, here it is. Unaware. Knows. Unaware, as we anticipated, might be. We're trying to find out. Okay, so we the know now. The best way to stop a sweeper with, the, with that unaware Kofeva not caring about the boost. Oof. Okay, so what do you go for? Wish, and we got Mystical Fire. Okay. Uh, so, so wish mystical fire draining kiss and calm here's mind. the talk those are his four moves calm mind Ooh, interesting interesting indeed Let's see what happens here uh, that's a that's a that's an interesting set uh <laughs> to bring to the finals those those four moves having draining kiss be his most powerful attack uh it makes it makes the sylveon's damage output a little a little problematic especially since he's on a timer now that the toxic is out, uh, Ooh, never mind. Because it's seal bell. Ooh, and he could just drain and kiss and get some nice recovery back. Um, the only problem here is that we do know that heal bell is only seven out of eight, as you guys can see here. And toxic should be a good, yeah, fifteen out of sixteen left. So not enough heal bells to counter the toxic plays. Yeah, and um, if, if Lazy Ghost is good at one thing, it is uh, Wish Protect stalling you out of your moves. That is uh, definitely something that he can do to... Uh, this This Clefable doesn't care that its special attack is super low. It uh, It's it's going to be able to Toxic, it's going to be able to Wish Protect. It's going to, no matter no matter how high this Sylveon wants to get its special attack, it doesn't actually matter because it's unaware of Clefable. So you're not going to be doing boosted amounts of damage to it. And he's just going to recover it all up from the Wishes and the Leftovers every turn. Yeah, 100%. Um, Prep-wise, we did, we tried. I told him that it, being Arthur, it's he was going to lean more towards the... Um, the unaware set, 100%, um, and here we, we see it. We see it firsthand that unaware the fable is putting in work, man. It's just going to sit here and think. Um, the only thing, the only downfall of all this is that he has to kind of waste away at his toxic and his wishes and his protects. The protects not so much, but the less chances he has to heal with wish and less options he has to toxic are going to be... They might matter at the end of the game. The one thing I question is, I assume we're going to be in this position for a while, so we can just like talk back and forth because I think they're just going to keep trading like this. Um, 
with with Spartan's team with his six that he brought, like what is the answer to Clefable? Because there's no steel type. Like maybe you have Iron Head on Terrakian or something. Um, but like I just don't see what breaks through the the unaware Clefable right now. Gotcha. Um, the only way is if he prepped for um, unaware and probably has a toxic user somewhere. Um, you right. know, trying to static like him Nicole back. Or something. Yeah. Um, does Clefable get a heal bell? That's another good question, actually. Because uh, that was I a case. think it. I think it does. I'm. I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, I can. I can look it up right now just to make sure we're not going. Yes, he does get heal. He bell. does get heal bell, but we might be seeing here a <laughs> toxic guts. Is this like a guts Conkelder now that just came out here and is about to put in work? Is he guts if he doesn't like bring his own flame flame orb? Like that would be. Ooh, crazy. there he is. He he just revealed the facade. Oh, Ooh, indeed. Relying on your opponent to set up your status on your Conkelder? That's insane. That is such a a, hu a huge play from Lazy Ghost in the finals, and uh, now that Obstagoon on Spartan's end is uh, is going down. But the good news is that no matter who wins, Obstagoon is going to be champion today. I can agree 100% <laughs> so we can see that. <laughs> um, yeah, but man, Guts can Kelder, and it's bulky. Uh, if there's anything I learned was prepping for Arthur was uh, you don't have to invest attacks into Conkelder, and Conkelder is still a monster. It's ridiculous. Oh, of we how saw much... how bulky it was, right? Yeah. Ate that flare blitz. So imagine adding bulk, and now you have a Guts facade Conkelder. It's like you have a powerhouse defensive monster on the field. Good thing is for Spartan here, he does have the Necrozma there, which we know can be a specially offensive mod. Um, right. I, well, we've seen leftovers, so we know he's not a salt vest. Um, question is, is it within range of a photon geyser, depending if it's a physical or special attacking Necrozma? It might be after, you know, maybe another toxic turn or two. It might be low enough for it um you know you just have to you have to you have to send something out here to <laughs> to take a hit from conkelder as the toxic turns start to to build up and that's really the question is like what is the option and he's deciding the the arcanon at least this turn uh, i don't know if it's a, a sacrificial dog or if it actually has something up its sleeves to to hit this maybe like extreme speed to outspeed the mock punch from conkelder um, but at least if he can sack these things to get them low enough, then the Conkelder's HP will be low enough for Necrozma to, to knock it off. Or knock it out, I should say. Gotcha, gotcha. You know what I'm also loving right now? Is that, how we were mentioning earlier that, well, um, these Z, um, Dynamax mods can either be Conkelder or the, um, the Dragapult. And then in right. this, and in this end, we have the, um, Terrakion or the, um, Necrozma. And we haven't seen the Krozma or Dragapult hit the field yet. It's potential deep, you know, Dynamax captains here, just sitting in the back, trying to see if the bench can kind of do and like cripple through our opponent's team here, before potentially coming in and just kind of wrecking through. Because we've seen it, we've experienced it. How broken is Dynamax? Oh, dude, don't get me started on it. <laughs> Especially in singles, it's uh. It's a whole, a whole nother beast of its own, um, and I, so that's that's actually pretty cool that both trainers have, uh, you know, all four potential Dynamax users available still, two on each side. Um, I think Terakian is still at full health. Yeah, he is. So they've actually, you know, haven't taken. Ooh, uh, Off Segundo has there. gone down. Is my question here now is, was that a clean switch in for Arthur? Was that his whole motive right here? To get a clean switch in? Well, Optigoon did its job. He beat the other Optigoon. He knocked out the Zera Aura. Uh, and this Optigoon obviously would uh, get hit get hit by the Sylveon and would get hit by the Terrakian. He knew the Arcanine was already in, so he can't get the Defiant boost because the Intimidate can't, you know, recome onto the field. Uh, so I think Lazy Ghost understood that Obstagoon had like done what it needed to do in this matchup to in order to help the team win. And now you can really focus on Dragapult uh, as your potential win con here. Um, if it is a like if it's a setup kind with Dragon Dance, uh, or say uh, even if it has like. Um, 
I think like Dragapult also gets fly, so you can do like max airstream on Dragapult, so he can boost his speed even higher. Uh, but if not, like nothing, nothing on Spartan side wants to eat a a potential max Phantasm if this Dragapult switches out or switches onto the field. And remember that uh, Dragapult is not only the number one KO leader in the uh, LELG Max League this season. It's also the number two KO leader on uh, on the other team since we had like the double the double drafting going on. So uh, Dragapult is the first and second best KOer in the LDL this season. At, uh, on Lazy Ghost team, he's 21 and three. That's his KD. Uh, so the, the Dragapult could just go for three Max Phantasms here and, and claim a couple knockouts. That is crazy indeed. Wow. Okay. That's wow. Indeed. This is <laughs> it, man. This is okay. Wow. I didn't know that they were first and second. Um so I was like, yeah, whoa. It's, uh, it's, it, it's actually it's pretty insane. So uh on Marty's uh on Marty's team, he's twenty he's twenty one and three. Uh so the twenty one three KD and then on the San Antonio Sparse, uh he the Dragon Bolt for him is seventeen and ten. So that is a combined let me let me try to do the math. We're here. Thirty-eight and thirteen this season, Dragapult. Uh, and, and of course, he's a Dynamax user on both of their sides. Wow! He didn't so even max yet. He didn't. He didn't. And I. It's funny because before the match, Anthony told me these are his three crucial mods to win the match: Sylveon, Necrozma, and Terrakion. These are the three mods he needs to win the match. He told me. And he still has them on the field, and I think all of them are actually relatively healthy, relatively healthy, right? 76%, uh, 100, 100. They're still healthy. Yeah. They're still healthy. I think Arthur as well, 100, 88, 870. So just uh, HP-wise, we do know that Arthur's ahead and Mon count. But I wouldn't count out Spartan 275 out just yet because... These are. This is like he has his king, his queen. And what's another good chest? I, I like the rook. He has a rook still. He has you're a queen. A rook, you're a rook fan. <laughs> I do enjoy the rook in the chess game. It's like I usually <laughs> those are my goals too. Um, I respect it. I respect it. Well, actually, you know, Terrakion is more of a a bishop. A bishop. I was, so yeah, I was gonna say like I'm, most, I'm kind of a bishop kind of guy. Gotcha, gotcha. So no, yeah. Um, but um. I kind of would have risked the biscuit here and probably even gone into Sylveon on that turn there with the dragon. I, well, I don't know. I think he made the right play though, well, sacking the Arcanine. In, ca in case he Dynamax and went for Max Phantasm, like he probably just knocks out the Sylveon. Like, or even if Sylveon lives the first one because he switched in that turn, he was going to mm -hmm. eat two Max Phantasms. You know what I mean? So I think it was just a little too risky to to call that he, w that he was going to go for a dragon attack there. Uh, the other concern I have for Sylveon on, on Spartan's end is uh, Dragapult gets Steel Wing. Uh, you know, it's already busted. It gets way too many good moves. Uh, and he's showing right. Dragon Darts. So you are right. that's a physical move. Uh, we can expect, unless this is some kind of mixed Dragapult, which it very well could be. We've only seen one move. Uh, this, this Dragapult might also have Steel Wing, and it can go for a max Steel Spike if it wants to. So that would actually probably knock out the Sylveon here. Uh, I'm not sure what it would do to the Terrakian, but if this is the choice to go of Terrakian, uh, then it will outspeed the the Dragapult here and could uh, potentially go for, for Stone Edge crit or something like that. No, agreed, agreed completely. Um, but yeah, once again, if it's choice, remember we still have the Fair Thorn in the back, so he can't really lock himself into this move here. Oh, and he misses the Stone Edge! It's not like it would have done too much damage, but it's still just like you know insult to injury there uh, no. because he missed he missed he mispredict and he missed his attack like so you know it was a it was a rough turn for Spartan. I'm not gonna lie to you right here. I would have gone for close combat. I would have gone 100 percent and risked the biscuit, knowing that everything lies on shifting the momentum of the game. He could have shifted the momentum. If he was a player squid, I, I would agree. You would have went for close combat. That was 100% the type of play you would have made. Yeah, no, I, I think right here was a crucial moment to say, he's been playing me like I'm a scarfer. I'm going to play my scarfer game then. Knowing that you're going to swap out, bam, go for that move. Um, 
So now he's kind of in a, a hard position here because his opponent's going to go for the lead sheet. Um, what is he going to do here? Because Clefable, like, I think in our prep also, Clefable and Ferrothorn combined are a notorious, a monstrous oh. wall breaking. Yeah. Like, it's ridiculous. They're like, unstoppable. Yeah. They are. They are. That's why I kind of had Conkildor on my team because you can do a lot with that. You can do a lot with that. He's he's playing it fast paced now. It's <sighs> sparring two seventy five. Now, now we're back to where we were about a dozen turns ago. Yes. With uh, the symbiotical fable just tickling each other. But we're not gonna stay there long. Okay, so he does go for thing. Um now it's a little bit riskier. Now it's riskier because um you could go for the stone edge and try to just cripple this clefable. Or pull a double as he goes for a protect. And now we know the full moveset, which we did see this. Well, I didn't know if I saw it 100% coming. But yeah, Toxic, Wish, Protect, Moonblast. A typical pretty set. Standard, pretty yeah. standard for Clefable. Or Mr. Mr. Twinkles, as we can see here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just Twinkles. The Twinkles here putting in work. I don't know how many championships Mr. Twinkles here has won Arthur. But it's actually been a lot. Knowing that it's his signature Pokemon, it it's is like, you know, there's like Ash and Pikachu, <laughs> Cynthia and Garchomp, and then Lazy Ghost and, and Clefable. Like, yeah, exactly. No, it, for me, his signature probably would have been um, who would be my signature Pokemon? Probably Victini, right? You have like eight million KOs with Victini. I do have like eight million KOs with Victini. <laughs> <laughs> like eight, like a, a whole bunch of different. You've run every potential set possible on Victini. It's it's actually it's actually frustrating how many different Victini sets you've used. That's why I didn't win the championship because I didn't have Victini. If not, true, I would have won true. this. Not, <laughs> but not. Uh, but no, indeed. Um, wow. Yeah, no, Clefable. Uh, Clefable and Arthur is... Clefable? With these three... It's not, like, even if the a... Cosmos set up, like, you can't set up against unaware Clefable. So, like, how do you break Clefable? Do you hope for Stone Edge crits, I guess? So, how many Toxics he has? He still has nine Toxics, while his opponent has five Heal Bells. It does that amount of damage. He did land one of them. I knew this was gonna happen. All right, well, protect is coming. Protect's coming out, right? It has to. No, the moon no blast. Protect. Wow. Oh, that special, a uh, special attack drop though. That was gu that was gutsy from Marty because uh, if Stone Edge hit him there, then it, if it got a crit, it would have knocked out because he didn't protect, and then nobody eats the uh, the witch recovery. You're right. You're right. One hundred percent. Um. So he can't heal Bell here. Cure back two of his mons. Um, I'm not sure how useful Cliff Fable will be after it loses all his toxics, though. Oh, I was actually expecting a Moonblast on that turn. Expecting to switch out from uh, from Sylveon into Terrakian. So, so we got uh, four at, and at some point, seven. even if the even if the toxics run out. For for this this Clefable, like he still has the Moonblast to hit the the tracking. And since the Sylveon is not leftovers, it's not recovering any HP. So every turn, or he does have leftovers. Sorry. Um. So he takes that Toxic, and then the next turn he has to Heal Bell. So he's still like losing health at this point. It's not like this Sylveon is going to be able to get up higher, back to higher HP because he's just going to keep eating Toxics. Moonblast. Oh, oh awesome. man, I know that would have been one hundred percent. Um, he connects another stone edge. He was waiting for that crit, but there, we see another toxic in potentials. Um, I don't know. He's down to five toxics though, as his opponent has three heal. But bells. he's down to four stone edges on Terrakian, and he's gonna waste the stone edge this turn if he stays in on uh, potential protect from Cofable. That's true, one hundred percent. Uh, and even even if he does crit, I don't believe a crit from full HP is going to knock out the Clefable. Uh, so Clefable can still go for his Wish Protect shenanigans here. So like you know, as, as we said 20 turns ago, how does how does Spartan break through <laughs> the Clefable? And I I just don't really know if there's an answer. Uh, yeah, I agree. Another Moonblast as he goes for the Heal Bell, recovers up his team. Knowing he has to stay healthy, try to get some HP back here. 
as he does we are down to four toxics and two heal bells he needs to play around these toxics best way possible um it's gonna oh, be tough though so rough. it that's is so it rough. is rough 100 percent it's also the clefables uh fast and sylveon and they both have base 60 speed i believe so uh it could be a crazy speed tie or it could actually be clefable has some speed investment in him to, to make sure he's faster than the sylveon wow that'd be that'd be very very smart of our opponent yeah because clefable's won every actually i think clefable's won every single speed tie. he's probably fast so he probably oh is this a moment oh he went for oh. mystical fire <laughs> okay so it's clear body man that was smart okay. that was smart of his opponent here and that is a, i don't know if draining kiss would have been killed though uh, i doubt it that was the dragon dance risk. Another mystical Double. fire, what? Oh the no. Games. His... Oh my gosh, the That's... vine games. He said he could have eaten two moon blasts at this point and he hasn't faced any of them. He's not been punished for, for this aggressive playstyle from Lazy, who's typically very defensive and has played defensive most of this matchup. Like these last two turns have put him in a phenomenal position because now Dragapult is faster than Terrakian, so he doesn't care about the scarf and he can Dynamax finally and, and clean up the game. This is this is very interesting. Um, I want to run Calcs. I really do right now. It's like the nat the Pokemon trainer in me saying run Calcs. <laughs> so here we see the Max Phantasm. Question is, well, this it comes down to the la this play here. I'm gonna tell you this. Right. It comes down to this play because of the fact that his Necrozma is weakness policy. He told me. Ooh. If it's That's anything cool. that wins him this game, any cheeky thing, I had, I said, hey, you need to have something up your sleeve. He told me, I have weakness policy necrozma. And I'm like, bro, you better bait it somehow. You better <laughs> bait it somehow. Um, because If there's ever a turn to bait out the, the, the super effective attack, it's right now. Yeah, but knowing Arthur, it is also very, very challenging to make that play. Um, so we're gonna see here. here. Is. He's gonna Dyna. The cool thing is, you know, we all know Necrozma gets that filter, but he actually right. goes for the <gasps> dragon type play. Smart, smart <gasps> indeed. <laughs> wow, that he is, knew it. That's a really smart play from Lazy Ghost. I don't even know if he knew it was weakness policy or not. Maybe, I, maybe Spartan has run that before this season. So he, he did run Lazy. it against me. He did run it against okay, me. Okay, so, so so Lazy's seen it before. Yeah, he has seen it. He's run it himself. He he runs weakness policy, Dragon Paul. Right. So it's like, I I'm not does, shocked. Does he have Max Guard the right play right there? One hundred percent, in my opinion. Right. Um, does he have Autotomize on the Crosswell? He does, but it so doesn't matter if, right now. So if it was right, because he's Dynamax, he can't click it. But the first turn he came out, if he was expecting the Max Wormwind, he could have autotomized to get the speed boost to be faster than Dragapult. And then the next turn, he could have clicked it. Oh, and he wastes his third turn of Dynamax for nothing. Oh, this is it. He needs to kill. And he does. Wow. What a game. What a game and a half. And he can't lock himself into any move here. Um. Wow. Wow, indeed. I believe that is three more KOs for Dragapult here. Um, As so. he cleans out <laughs> this game, man. So, Arthur is now a two-time champion in LDL alongside Brennan, who is Thumb Brother 2, our first two-time champion in LDL following squid also a two-time champion at ldl and now we can congratulate arthur on also joining the squad here that is very very impressive that uh, lazy ghost was able to win that game and uh you saw his his defensive core of ferrothorn and clefable essentially untouched throughout the throughout the matchup because he was able to keep them uh, so clean. Uh, so we are actually going to try to get Lazy Ghost uh, in the call with us right now. So Squid, if you want to, if you want to, oh yeah, invite sure. him here to to our call so we can talk to him about his victory. Yeah. Um, 
I knew that weakness policy wasn't gonna play. I, it's just it wasn't gonna work on Arthur. But let's see. Let's add this our friend here. Wait, what, who did I just try to add? Uh, you added me. You sent me a friend <laughs> request, and and I will gladly accept. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Wait, how do I add somebody? What is this option to add a friend? Oh gosh. Do I have to make uh, a new I'll, thingy? No, I don't think so. I think we should be able to add him to our uh, our our little I group so right too. here, right? You should. What if we like? Oh gosh! Sorry, everyone. Yeah, this is here. very uh, unprofessional <laughs> of us. We've never done tell. this before. I'm not the best with Discord. Uh, um, what if? Join call. That's it. That I had just. I just went to his page and added him. No, wait. I just. I joined his call. Wait, no. We are, wait. Oh. I don't know what's going on, guys. But welcome. As you guys there. can see. We figured it out. Oh, we figured it out. What a game and a half. Man, you know, I tried everything in my power to prep Anthony for this game, and obviously, I failed as a coach. No, just <laughs> um, but no, dude, what, hey, what was your thought going into this game? I want to know a little bit behind, like, that Ostagoon set, bro, right off the bat. <laughs> yeah, so um, I did a lot of work for this game. Uh, when it comes to playoffs, I get serious. I watch everybody's battles. Um, I looked at every one of his battles, and he, he ran Wish Protect almost every week. And so um, I wanted a set that where if he felt comfortable uh, Wish Passing and Wish Protecting, that I would be able to like really disrupt uh, and cause some chaos there. And I wanted a defensive set, too, because I wasn't really willing to risk the speed tie with his goon. So I was Obstruct, um, Substitute, Defiant, because he had Double Intimidate. Uh, with throat chop to potentially catch the hyper voice and double edge. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, Lazy Ghost. You are an absolute psychopath because <laughs> the turn you stayed in with Obstagoon to substitute oh, yeah. against Terrakian, so it was later revealed he was Choice Guard, but at that time yeah. I didn't know that. And I'm like, I was like, that was the guttiest play I've ever seen. Oh yeah, so I'll walk you through my, my mindset there. So as soon as I got behind the sub, um, I think any any mortal man brings in Sylveon and clicks Hyper Voice. So the fact that he wasn't going into Sylveon kind of made me realize that like he wasn't going to be able to stop Bob Stagoon with Sylveon, or at least that's oh. what I had in my mind. Mm. And and if in any, in any circumstance, you just go Terrakion, um, and click uh, close combat. Uh, but I, I, I would think you always go Sylveon. Um, you always go Sylveon there. So when I saw him go Terrakion, I'm thinking in my head, okay, so what could be problematic, the most problematic thing that could happen to me right now is he sets a sub of his own because I have nothing to hit this thing with. Um, or he goes for a banded hit. Like my Clefable set was only able to survive um adamant non with no boosting items so if he had light orb or if he was banded i was kind of screwed so i made the decision at that point i was like all right goons caused a lot of chaos um i have secondary checks for sylveon in my clefable and my ferrothorn um so i'm okay i'm okay sacking so I, like it may, I guess in retrospect, it probably looks like I was just a madman staying in, but I was, prepared, <laughs> I, I, was I was prepared to sack Goon because if he started clicking things with Choice Ban, um, I didn't really have switches for that. So I was prepared to stay in uh, and just sub and see what he went for. If he was banded and went for like um, Stone Edge or and missed, I got initiative. If he did anything else, I got initiative. I lived in Earthquake. Um, it, and I figured he would probably have earthquake for coverage, but uh, yeah. So that was my mindset behind it. It was just kind of, it was kind of lucky, uh, a little bit. <laughs> wow. Oh, so impressive. Now, wow. so let's see other other things we can ask you here. Um, can can you name a more iconic duo than Lazy Ghost and Clefable? Because I'm coming up <laughs> short right now. It's it's pretty. I would assume it's your signature Pokemon. I don't know your yes. your thoughts on it. Um, yeah, but 
so how how are you so able because squid and i talked about this like your defensive play style where like your defensive core of clefable and ferrothorn like you just always know the right turns to wish to protect to, to switch out to set the lead seat up on on the ferrothorn like so like i feel like clefable was on the field for half of those 50 plus turns and it was never in threat of getting knocked out so like how do you play so consistently well with those defensive cores so, are you asking how I'm clefable to play defensively? Uh, <laughs> I, uh, well, I wasn't saying, but now I'm not. <laughs> so, so for me, um, I, I was an OU kid. I started OU. Clefable Ferrothorn as a defensive core has been OU since the inception of time, really. So, um, that's kind of where I've gotten my roots playing with that core. They, they cover their weaknesses so well. Um, in terms of, like, knowing when to wish, knowing when to toxic, knowing when to moonblast, um if i could give any tips to anybody listening or to you guys what is the my my strat or my mindset is what's the what's the what move can i click that is like the the closest thing to a no drawback play right so um pretty much it, i'm trying to remember what turns where we just kind of fluctuated um and going into this like i never worry about heal bell when i have toxic because i have three times as, or twice as many toxics than you do heal bells so i'm gonna win that i feel like especially with wish and protect um so that was my strategy like any time that he got a heal bell off he either had to make a switch into something that wanted to take a moon blast um so i was gonna stop that with toxic so if i caught the arcanine if i caught the terrakion if i caught uh really trying to catch the necrozma um that was a that was a win for me even if it meant like being at like 80 percent health ish so um and my clef set um my clef set made uh i'm assuming he was jolly because i had a dragapult jolly zero aura i would uh three hit ko by plasma fist um i could survive a facade from adamant goon i could I could take two. I could take three close combats from adamant non-boosted Terrakion, and I could take flare blitzes all day. Um, and if he was a dragon dance and a Krosma set, I walled that too. So that's that was kind of my idea. I was like, wall as many things as you can. Fizz Dep with Clef. Um, take care of the special things with the combination of Rotom and Ferrothorn. Uh, so that was that was my mindset going to, and always make the always make the safe play, especially in playoffs. Um, unless you're trying to sack, and then uh, I probably should have lied about that and said that that was a read, because that would have made me look a lot cooler. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely would have. Yeah. We we respect your your honesty there. That's what oh, we like yeah, about yeah. you. Yep, yep, keeping it real. Yeah. Um, but I guess like any questions about prep, I can walk you through head to toe, like what all of my sets did and like the purpose and what I was thinking too. Well, uh, you are the strategy hunk after all. I do have one question, which yeah. I, I knew it was it was. It was, I could see it from a mile away. But was the weakness policy on the Necrozma an obvious, or was I, you just playing it safe? Uh, playing it safe. Like, uh, so basically on my calc, um, the combination, so, so there was, um, no max phantasm at plus one killed Necrozma, even if you had zero bulk. So in my head, I'm thinking, all right, I could get greedy and go. So I was, I was U turn, Dragon Dance. Uh, dragon, uh, dragon darts and um, phantom force. So once I, if if phantasm had a roll to kill, I maybe go for it there. But the fact that it did not have a roll to kill, uh, especially if he clicked Dynamax there, uh, it was a it was a no drawback play to darts into uh, phantasm because if he's physical, um, I also lower his attack there. So uh, that was basically my mindset. So you 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 like uh you you went for like mid ground plays and then they had, they actually made you look godlike yeah, <laughs> with yeah, the st with the substitute Asagoon with the with the max War max wormwind instead of procking the weakness policy like yep. you played it safe and you got rewarded for it. Yep, I so I play if you I mean uh, Squid knows this we've been playing Pokemon for probably three or four years now. Um, I am a uh, defensive defensive guy. I like running offensive Pokemon defensively. Uh, my Conkelder was uh, Impish, 252 HP, 196 defense. I knew um, it. I knew it. If that gives you any idea, <laughs> um, I, it was it was there to eat any kind of variant of Terrakion and uh, KO back. And so so for me, like especially in a Dynamax format, um, there's a lot you can do with bulk. 
Um, especially having a Pokemon like Kinkelder that, are, that doesn't mind taking a knockoff. Like, leftovers were there because I didn't want to put an item on Kinkelder that if it got knocked off, it ruined my set. So um, I was uh, I was perfectly available to take a Toxic or take a Will-O-Wisp from the Arcanine and activate my guts that way. Uh, and then <laughs> you also, had your opponent set up your guts. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, it, the long story short... Um, I, I don't think I made an aggressive play that entire game. Um, even the Rotom switch into Terrakion, it's not like I was predicting hard predicting Earthquake or hard predicting like something like that. Um, it was just a mid ground. It was well, I can't go into Ferrothorn and risk uh, just dropping. I can't go into uh, my Dragapult even if I hard predict close combat <laughs> because I could lose the Stone Edge and a crit. So it was literally from turn one to turn fifty six just mid ground play as best as I could. Now, the last question I have for you, since I have both of you here, and then uh, and then Squid, you can ask anything you want. Um, but we have we have Blazing Squid, two-time Lonely Draft League champion. We have Lazy Ghost, also two-time Lonely Draft League champion. Not to mention, not to mention, I'm ninety-nine point nine repeating sure that we are three and three all time. So just to throw that out there, like that is the rivalry. Oh, so you have a 500 win record against each other. He's, he's got two playoff wins versus me. I think I have two versus him, and then we split regular season. Um, yeah, it's close. He's either up 4-3 or it's 3-3. So who is the first to win three seasons in the Lonely Draft? Oh, wait, oh, oh who's uh, going to be the first? Who's going to be yeah. the first? Between... He, he, so, yeah, be uh, so the first time we ever played, he waxed me, and then I got revenge in playoffs. Yeah. Um, but... The first to win three. Well, you got to add Thumb Brother two to that conversation. That's true. He's, That's the true. Two, he's the other two time, and like if anybody can pull one out of his rear end, just showing up out of nowhere, it would be Thumb Brother two. Um, I'm gonna, uh, man, I'm getting old, man. Squid, this is a young man's game. <laughs> uh, yeah, if I had to put in all the marbles, it probably me, probably me. Not to be cocky or anything, but you know, this should have been me here. But I, I, I took the bait Arthur put with that. Silly gift. I can't believe I fell for that still, man, to this day. You know, I go to bed and I'm like, how did I fall for that? Like, how? <laughs> See, yeah, it's uh, Squid's got a lot more uh, lot more years in front of him. I'm kind of fading off into the distance, so I, I'll go with Squid. Man, his Kobe years are over, man. It's like, he's, he's Kobe. He's already retired. He's ready to retire, man. Rest in peace, Kobe. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm entering my well, maybe prime. Maybe not Kobe because of what happened, but we'll, we'll say, okay. like, uh, We'll say like uh, Shaq. We'll like Shaq. Shaq, yeah, Shaq. Someone who kind of messes around in the background too. Yeah, Shaq like... still he still has a strong you know media presence on a lot of shows. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Just like yeah. Lazy Ghost. Uh, yeah. But now, yeah, with Lazy Ghost around um, myself as well, it's just gonna be hard to see these new guys make championships. Man, we're gonna make it tough. Which is the best wow. way? Like, how better way to win a championship wow. than to beat like? The lazy ghost in finals, or beat the blazing but squid. You're gonna eat those words, and I win three in a row, squid. All right. All right yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be Listen, waiting. I, I would have hey. in the finals too if I didn't draft colossal. I'll, I'll okay? tell you what. I'll, I'll tell you what. The draft? thing I want most. The thing I want most is I want someone to line up me, squid, and Brennan, and drop all three of us back to back to back to win a title. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that'd be crazy. In like yeah. an anime like tournament arc where like <laughs> every, like the the new villain beats like the three main protagonists back to back to back. I will write that novel if someone does that. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll step up to the plate. I'll help you team build a, for me against you. How about that? Yeah, but I um I also before we go I want to shout out to uh, Spartan. Um, he had a hell of a season. Uh, had a hell of a battle. I know it ended in four zero, but trust me, I was uh I'm I'm so I'm sweating over here, and it's just not uh. It's not because I live in Arizona. It was a intense battle. He had me on the ropes with a few sets. Um, you know, a crit here or there, or a uh, a right uh, a right call here or there. He definitely flips it in his momentum. And um, yeah, if he, if he, I think the thing I was the most afraid of, if he goes mid game to Crosma um, and starts setting up there, uh, I was really worried about Calm Mind. I'd be interested to know what his set was. But if he was a Calm Mind variant and had a way to. Uh, drop my clef and then start setting up. I was I was terrified of that. So uh, yeah. No, yeah. His uh, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know his exactly, but the move set was um, to run rock polish. And okay. Rock polish, um, full time geyser, heat wave, and he had moonlight. Oh, from wow. when I was That's prepping. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I did a couple mocks with him. First one kind of ended in a 4-0. I told him, I was like, yo, you got to play like a little bit smarter. Second one ended right around like 2-0. So I was like, you're getting there closer. He's getting closer. Um, but as we can see here, yeah, I, I, I kind of helped him. We, you know, we played against Ferrothorn, Conkelder, Clefable, Obstagoon, and Dragapult. So we don't. You know, I prepped him for like five out of the six. Wrote him. Nice. I, I can't even count Rotom. That thing died when it came in. Yeah, so it, it was uh, it, basically Rotom's job was uh, it was actually a pretty unique set. It was there to uh, bait in Gastrodon, and it was uh, it was sub toxic. I love my sub toxic set. Sub toxic, sub toxic nasty plot uh, to make uh, Arcanine think that it was safe, and I could drop a toxic on it. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it wasn't doing anything. As soon as I see, saw no Gastrodon, could not believe no Corviknight. Um, yeah. I'm and, shocked. I'm same, shocked. same. When I, yeah. I didn't, I couldn't believe it either. Yeah. So when I saw no Corviknight, I was like, Rotom, you're gonna die. Uh, you're gonna die beautifully, but you're gonna die this game. You don't really have much to do. So it was definitely sack number one uh, with no Corviknight. I do want to give a shout out at the end here to our Lonely Draft League server. Uh, you know, we have three divisions that are all running uh, very successfully. And of course, if you have if you've been entertained by this matchup in our G Max League, uh, please make sure to to watch our other videos, our other two finals in our our D Max division and then our uh, our Zemu division, which is our I believe that's our showdown league, like our like showdown only league, right? Yeah, they're all showdown right now. I think um, right now it's just based on skill set. So almost like double uh, A, triple A majors. Right. So, you know, shout outs to all our, our mods in the Lonely Draft League. Anyone, of course, who wants to join the Lonely Draft League, we're very, we're very welcoming. Uh, have a lot of have a lot of fun in there. And if any of our any of our high ranking members of the, the server are watching this video, Dragapult finished the season 41 and 10. Uh, might want to have some discussions going into season 11. I, I, I will say, and Marty, you can back me up. I said it before the draft in February. I already said that Dragapult was the best Pokemon in the format. And like five different people in, in the general chat told me I was overreacting. Am I? So, like, can we look back? Am I overreacting? So I'll say this. Dragapult with Dynamax capabilities, hands down, best Pokemon in this format. Um... You take away uh, Dynamax, I'm going to say it here, I'm probably going to get a lot of like, oh my god, shaking my heads. Obstagoon, both of them made finals. I yeah. think that's probably not a uh, coincidence. So it just does not have switch-ins in the Galar format. There's no Klefki, there's no Magirna. Um, there's nothing really that resists that dual stab, and it's 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 a nightmare. Especially if someone's planning to stop it with Intimidate, uh, you can get a little uh, creative there. I'm just happy I was right about Dragapult. Everyone told yeah. me I was crazy. And Dragapult was no, Dragapult carried me. I, it, just the fact that Marty took over a team that had Dragapult still to this day does not. I don't get it. But <laughs> it's it happened. It happened, and that man carried it all the way to the finals. But yeah, shout out to every single one of our players. Spartan two seventy five. Man, what a run and a half, bro. This man has. Yeah. Over the years, we over the seasons, we just see this guy getting better oh, and better. It's ridiculous. Same with Jack. Like Jack has, he was he was my finals opponent last year, and like this season, he came in and I think he only had like one loss. Did he? Yeah, one loss. Future. I mean, it's... we were talking just a couple. I mean, God, years now, but like a couple years ago, Anthony was uh, you know trying to make playoffs, and now he's trying to win a game of playoffs, and now he's trying to win finals so heck heck of an improvement there jack one of the young guns just always a threat um there's a bright future yeah no so, so eventually i'm gonna be the old guy who has to just kind of yeah. pass it on man i already already am so yeah you already are uh, and for, as, as for jetman 99 bro um i don't know yeah, can't, can't That's my boy. That, that future is still kind of like blurry we don't know if he's gonna make, make wow. ever win a championship but <laughs> I think I think that's the guy that I want to get, run the gamut. The uh, me, you, Brennan, and just finally pull it out. Oh, nah, he'll wow. never he'll never shut up about. Yeah, he would that. never let us down, bro. <laughs> he would frame that. He would frame it like. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> but with that, yeah. to all our listeners, we want to just say thank you. Thank you for sticking around. Hopefully, we can do this constantly next season. Hopefully, you know, get our uh, commentators for our matches probably even get up i don't know they always run through i don't know i don't know but i do enjoy you guys sticking around for these finals 
all the support you guys know link down low um if you want to join the server uh become a patreon um you know we're getting back up at it we're putting up like tournaments there's like speed drafts i don't know if you guys ever done a speed draft they're pretty entertaining um but no thank you guys the much blood love bath this off season oh bloodbath if you guys haven't signed up for that already do i'm gonna tell you guys my team but you guys can't snipe me which is gonna be uh Torkel, a g max charizard and mega hundoom so please don't <laughs> snipe that for me but I'm that not is because i'm not playing because i'm not insane <laughs> But with that said, players and trainers, this is your boy, the Blazing Squid. I'm out. I don't know if you guys want to do your outros, if you still have outros. No, let's end it in that awkward way. All right. So, players and trainers, thank you so much for streaming. Um, wait, no. What, what is my saying? I don't remember my outro. Wash it's your hands. Been, it's been is it wash long. your hands? It, no, it's yeah. it's been that long. No. You're is amazing. It is it you're amazing? Stay blazing. Blazing. There you go. Yeah. And do right. do okay. Again. So with that said, players and trainer, you guys are amazing. Stay blazing. Squid out. Wash your, Wash your hands. hands. Wash your hands.